Could you explain, I guess, also briefly why, and this is how Bill Cassidy, in some ways, you know, the, the kind of irony is if he had just uh, not taken the opportunity to try to get some press for himself back in May and just sort of kept his mouth shut and been another sort of, you know, backbencher um, who does, in fact, have a medical background. He could have just been wheeled out, um, you know, to defend and sort of articulate uh, uh, what most people, you know, sort of objectively would, would, would sort of has been, you know, very questionable, if not absolutely dishonest defenses of all these versions of repeal. But he came out back in May and got himself in trouble because he he put out this Jimmy Kimmel test thing um, and laid a marker down. He not only voted for skinny repeal, which of course would have destroyed protections for pre-existing conditions, but now is author of a bill uh, that will do essentially the same thing. How is he defending that and how exactly does this bill eliminate those protections? It's really uh, like probably the greatest mystery, and you really put your finger on it well at the heart of this whole thing. Yeah. Bill Cassidy, and I've, I've interviewed him before, he, he staked out the most pro-coverage position, almost of the entire Republican caucus. Like He was running around telling every reporter he could find that Republicans cared about protecting pre-existing conditions. And, and then, sort of out of nowhere, he became the lead advocate of proposing a bill that does the opposite. Um, I mean, the bill itself, uh, as I understand it, does not, um, I mean, as as he sells it, and I I think he's he's right about this, it does not necessitate that states strip uh, protections for pre-existing conditions, but it creates opportunities for states to apply and grant and receive from the federal government waivers that would allow them to essentially say that, you know, the residents of their state do not have to honor these requirements. And right. um, this isn't like a hypothetical. It seems almost certain that, you know, the Republicans control most state houses. It seems very likely that many Republicans would go forward um, with that plan. So, so I mean, the, the politics of this are like pretty clear that most Americans favor protections for pre-existing conditions. Um, but like, if you add on top of that, that Cassidy himself said that he favored that and then is now proposing a bill that uncontestably at least opens the door to do that. I mean, he might have this sort of rhetorical sleight of hand that is defensible where he says, you know, we are okay with New York, California, blue states that want to keep these protections. But the real world consequences is that people with pre-existing conditions are more likely to be discriminated against. And then the other piece of this is like, if you, I mean, this is not on the pre-existing conditions front, but if you're, you know, they, they have marketed, and then maybe we can talk about the politics in a second, but yeah. they market this bill, Republican senators market this bill as a huge um, step forward for states' rights, for states' ability to administer their own health care. Um, but that's really hard to do when the federal government is taking it billions of dollars out of your state. It's very hard to say this is a states' rights bill when, in fact, the states have much less flexibility to oversee the system as they want. Well, yeah, and also when there's a, and we'll get to this later when we when we go to the sort of, you know, maybe potentially countervailing force here, there's also, you know, the notion that I think it was Luther Strange trying to attach language to this that states couldn't opt to use this funding for to create state single-payer systems, which is, of course... I, I think mean, that was uh, John Kennedy, Oh, right? excuse me, John uh, Kennedy, rather, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, pardon me, right. So... Yeah, let's move to the politics of it. I mean, <laughs> that, was, that would just to stay on that note, that may have been the one of the most surreal exchanges I've had on the Hill, where they're advancing a proposal right. that they say the entire edifice for which is to give states the freedom to oversee their health care systems as they want. Right. And then someone is proposing, and I'm not sure it's going to end up in the final bill, but a senator says well, we don't want them to be able to set up a single-payer system in their own state, even if they want to, which is just, it's so self-defeating of the entire purpose of the bill. And I think, like, I've just never seen so many reporters' jaws hit the floor in simultaneous unison as when a a senator selling a bill for states' rights then says, also, we we don't want liberal states to do what they want to do under this bill. I would also say that, the it doesn't ability. surprise me at all, I have to say. I, I mean, not even for a <laughs> second. 
Hi folks, Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.